I know you're asking yourself, because I'm asking myself as well, what am I doing here? I frequently get asked questions like this, and I just have to, I've got a confession. My name is Carrie, and I'm a politician. <laughs> but I also get asked questions like, why did you run for office, or do you know what you're doing? And honestly, the answer is, I don't know. I am by nature a very fearful person. I'm afraid of everything. I'm much more comfortable hiding in my house than presenting very controversial legislation on the House floor. But in 2015, I got a phone call, and I was asked to run for office, and I knew it was the right thing to do. I was scared, I was so unsure, afraid, but I did it anyway. I ran for city council in 2015, I lost, but I learned a lot, and it was the right thing to do. In 2016, I ran for the House of Representatives, I lost, but I learned a lot, and it was the right thing to do. And at that point, I was comfortable making the decision to never run for office again. I could live in anonymity, teaching, gardening, selling real estate, spending time with my grandchildren. But then in the fall of 2019, I got another phone call. And this time, I did say yes, I would run. And there was no epiphany, no angel from heaven with uh, lightning bolts. There was no midlife crisis. It was just a still, small voice telling me it was the right thing to do. And then, of course, as we all know, 2020 happened. And that changed the trajectory of everything. Governments at all levels took a hammer and shattered our constitutionally protected rights. They encroached on our freedoms, our families, and our faith. And the only two things that I knew when I walked into the Capitol on January 4th of 2021 were I didn't know what I was doing and I was not going to wear a face mask. <laughs> But I was still afraid. But it was the right thing to do. Fast forward to today. Right now, I'm on day 10,042 of a 90-day session. <laughs> and I haven't throat punched anyone yet. You'd be proud of me. Even the men with whom I have to share a bathroom at the Capitol, because we can't legally or forcefully keep them out. So right now, I'm in the last two weeks of the session, and I didn't even realize the depth and the breadth of the legislation I carried until my enemies showed up at my doorstep, thus the title of Villain of the Week. I'm kind of claiming it as Villain of the Month, though. So, And it has been brought up over and over again in testimony by the left during this session that these issues don't impact Montana, so we don't need to carry such legislation. But right now, Montana, Montana, has two transgender legislators. They're a very vocal minority garnering national attention, not just by their existence, but also by their absurd threats and misbehavior. Right now, there's actually some national um, press going on about that. This session, I have sponsored or carried pieces of legislation that, one, revamp the appointment process for the Judiciary's Ethical Commission, two, guarantee an infant who is born alive during an attempted abortion is given appropriate, life-saving, or palliative care, three, ensure that parents are given adequate notice to opt their children out of human sexuality instruction in our schools, four, continue tort reform within the state, five, restrict marijuana advertising, six, enhance Second Amendment rights, seven, strengthen election integrity, eight, enforce the constitutional rights of people who are licensed by the state of Montana, nine, get this, allow parents to be parents, but 10, when I carried Senate Bill 99, that does not allow surgical or medical procedure on those children who are struggling with gender dysphoria, I was asked by my colleagues, why are you carrying this bill? I was told, it's going to ruin your political career. And I was warned, your colleagues will have to distance themselves from you because this bill is so toxic. 
I wasn't the only one who was afraid of this legislation, but I knew it was the right thing to do. And I prayed that I could be compassionate and strong. And even though it was the toughest bill of the session, I knew I was the right person to carry this bill. And after weeks of threats, the chaos, the debate, and finally, my closing on the House floor, we passed Senate Bill 99 on the House floor, 65 to 35. And this week, I had to carry it again with the governor's amendments that strengthen it even more. And then right after the rhetoric where we were told we would have blood on our hands, I quietly closed and we picked up one more vote for a 66 to 34 victory. But our fight is not over because right after the vote, I walked into the bathroom and there I was once again face to face with a man who says he is a woman and I have had to share my bathroom with a man all session. Our daughters have to share their sports with men who say they are women. Our children have to listen to the narratives that they are not uniquely and wonderfully made, that truth does not exist and that they should not trust their parents. Our teachers are threatened with investigations and lawsuits if they don't participate in the lies. Our parents are being treated as the enemy and not allowed to see their kids' medical or school records. Our families are struggling and being emotionally manipulated with the lie that it is better to have a live son than a dead daughter. I understand crisis. Although she was not transgender, my daughter was suicidal for three years. At that time, she was not healthy enough to make the kind of decisions necessary to ensure that she would grow to be a healthy and successful adult. And while her intentions were not to be cruel, I had to learn to resist her emotional maneuvering and be strong. I had to be strong for her, I had to be strong for myself, and I had to be strong for my family. I really am not a politician. I'm just a citizen legislator who still doesn't know what she's doing. But I do know what we are doing here. I know we are here to fight for that which is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. And I know I don't have to be the smartest person at the table. That's what you are here for. I just need to show up at the table and use my gifts, skills, and talents that God has given to me and encourage you to do the same. And that's what I'm doing here. And we have a lot of work to do. Thank you so much.